Now back to working on the cabinet. Not too much left to do. I hope to finish it off this evening. It's been a few weeks since I put on the last coat of lacquer. And there haven't been any issues so far with anything uh, peeling or cracking or lifting up or anything with the new veneer I put on the front. I just temporarily uh, installed the back to see uh, how it would look. If you recall, when I got this, this piece of metal here, which is a little cap to protect the neck of the CRT, was very rusty. So I drilled out the rivets, threw in a bucket of evapo rust, and once all the rust was gone, I brushed it up a little bit with a wire brush, and uh, then clear coated it with some enamel, and then remounted it with some little hex cap screws. Otherwise, the back is in remarkable condition, considering that this set that clearly was stored in some sort of humid environment, and there seemed to be some rodent activity. Uh, no deterioration really whatsoever. Uh, I just tacked in a few screws into the original holes, and I think it's going to work out just fine. And now what I'm going to do is remove this back, put the set face up, and rub out the veneer around the controls. Since I glued down this veneer and applied the lacquer, we've had a number of crazy weather changes, which is often the case in the Midwest in the spring. So we've gone anywhere from down into the 30s to mid-80s and high humidity. And there's been no issue with the veneer separating or cracking, or splitting, anything like that. Same with the finish. The only minor thing I just noticed was here where there's a seam where just the piece of veneer just wasn't big enough. This, I wouldn't say it's cracked, but it's sort of raised or shrunk a bit. I'm not really that concerned about it that there are some little crack develops in the lacquer there. I can live with that because the main area is just fine. Similar on the other side. So underneath this, I believe it's a, a solid piece of poplar. Um, somewhat thin, you can see it here, and then underneath that is some plywood. So we have some plywood and a piece of poplar on that. So it may be uh, that it expands in this direction, and maybe not so much this way, and that's why that uh, split out a little bit. I don't know. But uh, hey, if that's, uh, if that's the only little minor issue, is that it cracks a little bit right there. That's all right. So, uh, rubbing this out, uh, it's just it's such good condition. I almost don't even think it needs it, but uh, I figure I'll give it a little try because it uh, it does alter the finish a little bit. Even let's get here in the light. See, it's pretty darn smooth. Virtually no orange peel. Uh, really good condition. But when you rub it out, it does get a little bit of a different look to it. Kind of a more uh, refined, uh, kind of hand, hand-worn look to it. So I'll give it a try. But it's smooth enough, I think I can go right to the rotten stone, which is the finest of the grades I have. But if not, I can back off a little bit and go to four off pumice. I don't think there's any reason to go coarser than that. And I'm just going to do the burl area. I'm not going to do the whole cabinet. Uh, these surfaces are fine. Fine. Uh, no reason to to go over all this. Now, as far as how do I rub it out, well, there's like giant salt and pepper shakers. You just turn the cap a little bit just so the holes are opened up. Put a little on there, super fine powder. And then take a felt block. I used to use mineral oil, but uh, I since switched to water. It, it, it works just as well, if not better, and it's far less messy. So I just have a little bowl here, water. Get the felt a little damp, and, and then start rubbing it out. And in between projects, I wash out the felt block to get the uh, excess rotten stone and veneer, or, sorry, lacquer that has been rubbed off out of the uh, out of the felt. And you just do this. You just rub it back and forth. This is what, this is what they call a hand rub finish. And let's do this for a little bit, and wipe it off. And I think you'll notice the difference. And then after this, what do you do? Well, it seems to be some matter of debate as to whether or not you need to wax a freshly lacquered surface. 
I usually do. Or I use this deluxing compound, which has a super fine abrasive in it, I believe, and uh, really high grade wax, which uh, I think adds a little bit of protection. I mean, it's just just like waxing your car for the same reasons. It uh, adds a little protection to the surface and makes it look nice. So not a huge difference yet. I can tell uh, just by feel that it's it's a little bit. Even though this is very smooth, this is even slightly smoother. It's a little bit different machine. I think it'll be more apparent after I go over a little bit more. After a few minutes with the rotten stone, I came to realize there's actually a little more orange peel in this than I realized. And although it is looking better after the rotten stone. Um, there's still some orange peel left, and it'll be faster and easier to get it off if I just go with the coarser pumice. So I switched to that, which is this white powder, slightly coarser. Now what is orange peel? I keep throwing that term around. That's slight bumps in the finish. That's, uh, I think, more of an issue when you use the spray rattle cans like I do than if you had a professional HVLP rig. It's very hard with these spray cans to get good flow out meaning that when you spray it, the little droplets all flow together and form a perfectly flat surface. Especially with lacquer, which is fast drying. So you got to get the right combination of temperature, humidity, how, uh, how much you spray on, the angle you spray at, and all that to get a perfectly flat surface. So, although from a distance it looks pretty... Darn good. Get closer and closer. Yeah, you can see that it's not exactly so perfect. But it's, it's definitely smoother here. So, actually, if I rub this enough, this will become perfectly smooth. So, that's what I'm going to do right now. So, switch to the white powder. A few minutes of that, then I switch back to the rotten stone, and we'll take a look at the results. And here we are after the 4F pumice. If I wanted semi-gloss, I would stop right here. Now I think you can see how much smoother that is. Now, there seems to be a lot of confusion about this concept of taking a gloss finish and knocking it down to semi-gloss or satin. Well, basically what you're doing is you scuff up the surface. That's how you make it dull. And, uh, yeah, you just have to live with there being many, many, many very fine scratches, especially if you wanted a satin surface. And if you start buffing and polishing it, you're just going to bring it right back to gloss. So, if you really want a super smooth surface and semi-gloss, then use some semi-gloss lacquer, which has flattening agents in it. So you can get a super smooth piano finish, buff it to your heart's content, but it will still be cloudy because that cloudiness is actually in the finish itself. All right, well, I don't want that. So next up, rotten stone. I'm just wrapping up my first pass with the rotten stone. These thinner felt pads work especially nicely to get on these curved surfaces. Off of the residue. Be really careful if you're going to try rubbing out. Get a separate felt block pad, whatever, for each grit and use a separate rag. You do not want to contaminate the finer steps with any of uh, the coarser grit. And you will be scratching things up as you go. Alright, that is looking really nice. Maybe one more pass, and then I will get out the wax. Especially when I get these edges polished up nice, because that curve is really eye-catching. Okay, now, done with the rotten stone, and I'll switch to the deluxing compound. Any good quality hard wax will work out just fine. Just don't use beeswax. 
that stuff uh, stays kind of sticky. You want a really good quality hard wax like Carnuba or something like that. Now, in fact, I know some guys use car products, car wax type products. My only concern with that is some of those contain silicone. Don't want to use that on any wood cabinets because the silicone gets into the pores of the wood and will make future refinishing extremely difficult, if not impossible, because finishes don't like to bond to the silicone and it's very, very difficult to get out. So this, this stuff was sent in to me by one of my fans and uh, I later found out it's actually uh, basically uh, Bellin deluxing compound. And I guess it was uh, really intended to spruce up the finish on something old. But I think it works great on uh, new finishes too. So I just, uh, this is the applicator pad he sent uh, with it. And it's, it's pretty uh, hard sticky stuff. So I use a little bit of naphtha or mineral spirits to uh, uh, soften it up. And then just like a car, I mean, just put it on. Let it harden and then buff it out. I just finished up with the waxing. You know the lighting isn't that great now in the evening, but I hope you guys can see how nice and shiny, smooth that surface is. So, not much left to do now, I guess except put it all together.